Hi, this is Shadi, and today we will be discussing the Lahiva Guard. The Lahiva Guard, arguably the greatest, some call it a guard of its own, and some call it uh, a variation of open guard. So, this guard has evolved tremendously throughout the decades, particularly the 20th and 21st century. Um, from its conception up until today, so many things are still being added, like sweeps, submissions, and moving in a way that will land you in a favorable position, like the bearing bolos uh, you see here in front of you. So, what we will do in this video is go back to the first ever video evidence of the Lahiva Guard and how it evolved in Japan, how it made it to Brazil, what's the story behind it, and all the things that were later on added to it, uh, martial, combative or not, but this guard has uh, has gone through a lot of changes and a lot of evolution, and I am, myself am a fan of everything that goes around the De La Hiva guard mechanisms and techniques. So, First is, of course, it's the Tsunetani Oda uh, footage where you see a De La Hiva hook followed by a Tomoe Nage to the side. Um, this is circa 1940s, but then again, if it's something that was shot in the 1940s, doesn't mean it was invented at that particular time. Oda has been crafting his Newaza from the 1910s up until his deaths. Uh, so I would say a rough estimate as early as 1920s, the De La Hiva guard could have possibly been invented. You can still see this particular Tomonage uh, till this day, even in Judo. Here you see Diorbek Urozboev of Uzbekistan pulling a very beautiful Yoko Tomonage uh, with the De La Hiva hook. Now, fast forward to the um, Nihon Kobudo series where Judo had a Kosen Judo um, series in it. Uh, this is circa 1970s. And here you see a uh, classical guard pull from Sleeve and Lapel. De La Hiva hook grabs the belt, pushes with the foot that's on the on the ground, and with the others he pulls towards him and thus landing him on his back. Notice how he goes to the side, uh, very similar to what we teach today, very basic stuff. You know, the first thing with De La Hiva is that you have to go to the side in order to keep that hook firm and tight. And here, let's see it one more time, pulls with the belt and pushes with the foot. Uh, let's see it in competition. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this. Uh, this is the Nanate Judo competition. Um, according to the Kosen Judo 01, the Brazilian page for uh, Kosen Judo, this is uh, the national championship that was do being done from 58 till the 1970s. So good rough estimate. This is the 1960s. Uh, again, you, you still see the same thing being applied. You have either the sweeps with the Tomoe Nage or just, you know, dropping them to the side and also a very efficient way to keep them at bay in order to not let them get past. Um, I know as you get more advanced, uh, any variation of open guard will become more usable as closed guard become, you know, like Craig Jones says, as you get more advanced, you tend to stay away from closed guard like the uh, plague. Obviously not everyone, but you know, you you tend to experiment more with these like open variations. So let's go to Brazil. And, and the story starts with the young Ricardo de la Riva, hence the name. And uh, the story goes is that he was at the Carlson Gracie Academy. Carlson Gracie Academy is made up of very tough guys who were very good at passing guard. And De La Hiva, him, was not a big guy. He was competing at the featherweight and um, he wanted to keep them at bay and also prevent them, regardless of their strength, from preventing his guard. So obviously he would study these old Nanate uh, footage and instructionals and he decided to adopt this particular hook. As you see here, he's a little bit to the side with the hook grabbing the belt clearly shows that he has been studying those old uh, Nihon Kobudo uh, series footage. Um, so at first they would call it Garda Pudima or Pudding Guard because these tough guys, when they would be in his guard, their legs would start to wobble as they are trying to pass and wobbling like pudding, hence the name. So uh, it was the Coppa Cantao circa 1986 
and it was uh, the final between Hoyler Gracie and here you see Ricardo de la Riva. Now I know uh, Hoyler is very much associated with the Eddie Bravo matches, but for those of you who are deep into the uh, history of Jiu Jitsu would know that uh, Hoyler Gracie in the Jiu Jitsu world is easily the most decorated or one of the most decorated champions of all time. Here as a black belt, he was still undefeated and it was the final, like I said, and De La Hiva was doing a great job at keeping him at bay, preventing him from passing, all thanks to that hook and those very firm uh, grips. So uh, here it was the first time that everyone was paying attention to this guard and really drew the attention, you know, because it was against the greatest featherweight, Hoyler Gracie, and the match ended, it went to referee decision, and it was given to here, you see, in a bit, you're going to see Ricardo de la Riva celebrating. So uh, this is how big that victory was. And it was against this man, Hoyler Gracie. Hoyler Gracie easily launched the de la Riva guard and the 10th planet uh, school um, with those two defeats. One against uh, Ricardo and he again against Eddie. So that was when de la Riva guard really became uh, popular and thus a lot of you know, uh, adding here and there started to become very prominent. Like the first example you would think of De La Hiva is, of course, your Berimbolo. De La Hiva himself said that I was not expecting that uh, the guard would evolve this much, adding so much to it. Now, when it comes to Berimbolo, I know it is not that much, you know, martial or uh, combative or uh you know offensive you know i know i i talk a lot about self-defense in terms of uh when i talk about judo jujitsu etc but i'm a huge fan of bearing bolos uh, i know i'm very big on self-defense but you know the the craftiness you know the beauty the way you watch it unfolds it is nothing short of mesmerizing it is poetry in motion it is picturesque i know you can do a very aggressive bearing bolo from uh, the guard guard passing um, like as you see here the old Mitsuro Kimura was doing it but you know in terms of doing it from the guard it takes a lot of you know expertise technical finesse etc and like I said I'm a huge fan of Berimbolos even though they're not very martial but in terms of taking the art to the next step, it is abs nothing short of amazing. You have also the reverse De La Hiva, the other leg being put to use on the other side. So it becomes more of a inside position open guard rather than outside position like a De La Hiva. Here you see Mikey Mzumechi uh, doing a variation where he includes both and transitions into a uh, leg lock, I believe. So um, you have the Berimbolos, you have the reverse De La Hiva. Um, after that, it was no Gi De La Hiva. There's just so many things that were eventually added to it. And I'd say the recent most uh, crazy addition is your reverse De La Worm Guard. If you have the uh, uh, lapel encyclopedia, I'm sure you have seen it. It's a reverse De La Hiva with your lapel, uh, Keenan Cornelius uh, signed. Here you see Meow doing it. Obviously, someone with great De La Hiva and reverse De La Hiva would uh, incorporate this into his arsenal. So, uh, again, you know, nothing short of amazing. Uh, so many things that were added to it. Even the the man that put it on the spotlight, Ricardo De La Hiva, said that he did not expect this to happen. So, uh, this is mainly it. Um, if you have anything else to add, maybe a story here or there that happened, but arguably the change or like the shift that happened, I would say it's the Coppa Cantau, the finals in the 80s between De La Hiva and Hoyler is what really brought it to light and really uh, permitted it to have all these uh, variations, uh, bearing bowls, etc. added to it. But uh, in terms of the basics, you know, sweeps, keeping someone at bay, as you saw in the championship, it, uh, it comes from judo. But uh, what was added to it later on is nothing short of amazing. Again, not martial, uh, not combative, but if you truly appreciate the art, you would truly appreciate um, what was added to it. And like I said, I'm mesmerized every time I see Paolo Miao, Mikey Muzumechi, all these people 
Mendez brothers, all these people, you know, playing magic with the De La Hiba guard. So if you have anything else to add, let me know down below. Also consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, your support would mean greatly to me and I have exclusive content for the patrons only over there. And also do not forget to check out uh, Josh Simon's shop in the description. This was Shady and thank you for listening.